Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. And today I'm uh, broadcasting live from Chesapeake, Virginia. And I'm sending out to uh, broadcast to uh, YouTube and Facebook. And uh, welcome all aboard. I hope you're all watching and I hope you enjoy the show today. Uh, Gloria, my wife, is in the studio. Welcome, everyone. And uh, she'll be uh, monitoring uh, the broadcast and uh, checking the chats and so forth uh, once we get started. Uh, now, I got something uh, special today. If you've ever been out, uh, uh, out outdoors in the springtime and so forth, and you've seen an artist painting on, along the road or uh, on the street corner or in the park, uh, haven't you always gone over there and wondered uh, what the artist was doing and, and how he was painting? Well, you're going to have a chance to do that today. I've, I've done a live uh, well, actually, excuse me, I did a plain air painting and I did it. Uh, what you're going to see is my plain air painting that I did this past weekend, and you're going to see it from start to finish. So, uh, I hope you will enjoy that. So, I'm going to take you over and get you uh, and start the video. And after the video is over, uh, I'll come back and we'll make some comments. Hi, this is Ever Ever's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Now today I'm going to I'm introducing the uh, latest video that I did on location for Plain Air, and uh, it starts out with uh, showing you my setup uh, outdoors again, a little bit different than the last one I showed, and then I'm going to go from a start to finish painting on location. So let's go to the video. Okay, this starts out with my setup here. You can see I brought a chair, chair out with me this time to sit down to paint. Uh, there's all my equipment laying on the, on the ground. I got a, my palette there next to a, a portable easel with a nice board to set up my uh, painting. And over here is my uh, sketchbook, where it was my sketch on there, my, uh, my planning sketch for the painting today. And uh, of course, the sketch, there's my palette, and uh, there's the uh, quarter sheet of Gemini watercolor paper, which I put the sketch on there. Now, this is the view I have from sitting down on the chair, looking at the view. This is the road to the ramp, boat ramp, and uh, I found it a very uh, fascinating little subject matter to do. One of my favorite places to go visit. So my setup here, I've got uh, the camera on my left side uh, looking over, and I'm starting out with the uh, the hake brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in the road. And I'm using a mixture of uh, uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to give me a gray, a gray mixture. And then I'm using the uh, the hake silver brush hake brush. Uh, which is the, uh, that's the that's the small size brush, about an inch and a quarter wide. But uh, it gives me a nice flow, and here I'm getting a nice dry brush look on the road. That hake holds a lot of paint, and it covers the, it covers the uh, painting very quickly. So I'm going to use that a lot today, a couple times today. You'll see that in my in my demonstration here. So I'm starting out this way. This is the starting point where I'm going to uh, put in the road and I'm going to go through each step now and paint through the whole process here. So you can make comments and ask, ask questions along the way uh, and I'll get back to you. Here's another brush. I got a three quarter inch brush. Now when I'm on location, I have my travel set with me, but I bring other brushes along. Uh, if, if necessary. And I always have some larger brushes, especially on a quarter sheet piece of paper, because I, I have to cover a, lo a larger larger space, so I need a bigger brush. Now here I'm picking up some burnt sienna and, and I'm, I'm painting in the, those uh, background tree or middle ground trees that are on the right right hand side of the, the road there. So I use a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in with uh, ultramarine blue to give me a dark brown. 
and that three quarter inch brush uh, is used used to get the uh, vertical stroke in. The vertical stroke using the side edge of the brush and then using the vertical stroke to get the, uh, the tree trunks in. And I'm going to put in, uh, now I switched to a smaller brush, number eight round brush. Uh, with the smaller trees there toward the background, I'm putting in the, the smaller trees, which are along the horizon line there. And this, that area is overlooking the, the small river bank back there. And I'm working on the left-hand side with the, again, with a small brush. Those, those are smaller trees, so I'm using a smaller round brush to put those in. The same paint mixture of uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. So this road takes me, there's a little, a little hill here, and over top of that hill, looking down, I can see the water, the water in a boat ramp is right there. It's about uh, maybe 100 yards away on the other side of that uh, bunch of trees. Now I've mixed up some. Uh, I used the green number two here, and, and a little bit of uh, a little bit of ultramarine blue mixed in to make to make it a darker green. But now I'm putting in those low green bushes on the right hand side. So I'm filling. What I'm doing is I'm putting in some base colors here, uh, just to uh, fill in the white space. My first objective when I do a painting is I try to cover the white paper. Uh, as quickly as possible. And I'm blocking in the larger areas with, with color. I'll eventually come back and add some more value to that. Mm -hmm. And on the left hand side of the road, there's another group of low bushes, low shrubbery there at the, at the, on the ground beneath the trees. What do Now there, there's the background. That that's uh, uh, on the other side of the water. There, uh, there are some more trees over there. So that's really going to be the background past this little hill here, and that's going to be the impact. That's going to be the focal point. A little group of trees, and I'm going to put in some uh, water just below that, and that's going to be my focal point at the top of the hill, looking over the hill. We look over the water down by the boat ramp. You can't see it here in the photo, in the picture here in the photograph, but uh, I know it's there. It just it's just about if I moved over 50, 50 feet away, then I could see the water from there. So that's going to be the focal point right there. That little that little piece of water with those little small trees in the background. I'm in between each uh, section I paint, I'm, I'm uh, mixing the, the colors I want on, the, on my small palette. So you'll see me mixing the colors, and we'll get to that next step here. And this big tree here on the left, uh, I've decided on leaving it uh, light like it is. I'm going to make it a darker, a darker gray. So I mixed up uh, another mixture of uh, ultramarine and burnt sienna to give me a dark gray. And I'm going to paint in that tree here on the left-hand side. You can see that in the photograph. I'm going to leave this photograph. I'll leave up here as my reference, uh, just for for you as a viewer to see what I am looking at. That's the view I have as I paint this particular painting on location. You're looking at the same site that I have as I'm looking at the painting. So I'm not following the photograph. I'm following the actual items that I see on the landscape. Uh, the photograph is just to give you a reference to, to appreciate uh, what thing, what I'm painting and where it's located in the painting. So that large tree on the left is really, a, uh, it keeps the eye from moving out to the left-hand side. It's, it's really, I call it a blocker. In art, I call that a blocker. So the eye doesn't go out outside the left side of the painting. And here, using that three-quarter inch brush, uh, I'm going to 
there, the limb really isn't there, but I'm going to simulate. I have a limb going across there. Uh, I'm using a little bit of artist license there to put in a, a small limb on that, that large tree. And what that does, that connects the left side of the, of the painting to the right side. Just another little technique, a little, little artistic uh, license to use. Now I'm using that hake brush again with a little bit of green mixture and put in some uh, base color down here in the foreground. Uh, there's some spring grass starting to grow, a little bit of brown grass. So it's quite, quite a mixture here. So again, I'm just covering up the white paper with a little light green mixture. And I'm using that hake brush. That, uh, that small hake brush was about an inch and a half wide. It's, it's a nice big brush to, to load and to cover a, a large area. And I'm, and I'm painting around those fence posts. They'll be painted in later with a darker color, so it doesn't matter. So I can go ahead and put that color in real quickly. I'm putting the, the grass here just to, uh, it really, it really takes a, a large area up here in the foreground, but it is part of the painting that I want to have. It, it gives me the dimension of the painting. This is the foreground area. And I'm not, this is not really the most important part of the painting. So it's just going to be covered and the brown. I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna in there just to give it a, a little mixture of color with the, uh, with the green. I'm just playing around with a brush, just filling in the, the area a little bit. I take that same color now and go off to the right side of the painting, the right side of the road, and put it in that same, that same mixture of green on the right-hand side of the road. And this is just a base coat, just to get the color in there, just to black out the, uh, the white paper. The block in the white paper. Now I'm using a smaller brush now with a smaller area. I use that three quarter inch brush to go up and uh, and fill in a little bit of that grass up there on the top, uh, left side of the road. Now I get the big sky here. I see. I think uh, we'll have to see here. I, yeah, I'm putting in the cold. I'm using uh, cerulean blue here to uh, paint in the sky. Uh, it was. It was a. It wasn't a very. It wasn't a real bright sunny day, but it was. Uh, it was a clear day. Uh, the sun wasn't really shining that much at this point in time. But I uh, wanted to have a, a light blue sky there in the background. And then I'll be covered up a lot with the trees. But I want to get the base coat in there. Uh, and I'm using the Hake brush to, uh, to apply that cerulean blue across the background sky. I just about got all the white paper covered now. Which is good. That's my first. Uh, my first job is to uh, get the paper uh, filled in with color. Get a start. Shifting my position, getting a little bit closer to the painting. I move myself up a little bit so I can. I get a little bit closer to the board. This painting. This painting board uh, as an angle. I can. Uh, it's about probably forty-five degrees or more. So um, it's not a vertical, but it's. Uh, it's got a nice steep slope to it, so it's easy to see. Uh, I started painting in a paint, uh, fence post over there, but uh, was, that paint is still wet over there, so I'm going to back away, work on this side of the road. So I took that little number eight round brush, round brush, and I mixed a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to come up with a dark brown. So I'm going to paint in those uh, those fence posts. And I, I made I changed the fence post a little bit from the picture. I wanted them a little bit taller, give them a little more, a little more territory on the painting, a little more, a little more interest. So I used a little bit of artistic license there to paint in the size and shape that I wanted in the painting. And these posts overlap the overlap the road, which will give us some uh, dimension. 
as you put posts or trees or anything into a, a landscape, the size and location uh, gives you the impression of depth. So with these with these fence posts out here in the foreground, overlapping the road, that shows that uh, the road is behind the fence, and it gives you the it gives you that sense of depth that I'm looking for in a painting. So a foreground, middle ground, background. And these fence posts will uh, indicate the, the direction I want you to go alongside the road. Now I'm putting in the, uh, the, rest, the rest of the fence line. And here I'm also playing with how I'm going to uh, put that brush stroke in. Now I'm using the half inch flat brush now, the, uh, my plain air brush, that half inch flat from uh, silver brush. Because it's a small area, a little more control. So now I'm, I'm painting in the rest of that fence line. And I do have uh, I do have a, the drawing there. I can see some of the drawings, so I'm making sure that I got the, the right perspective there uh, on that fence line. So I'm checking that line to make sure it's still visible. And I find it, and then I can go ahead and paint it in. So this is a it's going to be a step by step painting, and I, uh, those of you that enjoy watching painting will will enjoy this because I'm showing you all the steps I go through and all the process I do to to, to make this painting. And it's very similar to lots of other paintings, except the subject matter is different all the time. But you're always uh, mixing the paints, uh, you, selecting the brushes that'll do the job, uh, looking at what brush stroke you're going to use. I use there the side of the brush, the end of the brush. Here I'm using the broad side of the brush because it's a little bit larger. That little uh, little plain airbrush does a nice job. It's a it's a natural hairbrush, and I use it I use it all the time in the studio. Take it to me on on my plain air paintings, along with other brushes, but I use this one quite a bit, along with the uh, the round brush, number eight round. Now I'm going ahead and put in a little more color on those uh, trees, those large trees there in the middle ground. And those background trees, We'll need a smaller brush, so I'm using the, the round brush. Here I'm putting the post. That fence goes all the way along the edge of the road, so I'm putting in those smaller posts to show depth in the painting. As I go back, the post gets smaller along the edge of the along the left side of the road there. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in a little more color, a little darker color on those middle ground trees on the left-hand side of the road there. So I'm using that uh, number eight round brush with the same mixture of brown, of burnt sienna with uh, ultramarine blue. And for these background, uh, middle ground trees there toward, toward the impact area that are further back, they're again, use that small round brush to show that they're behind those two larger trees. In the show, there's quite a, there's quite a bit of quite a number of trees here in this location, but I selected the ones I thought would be the ones that would show off the uh, the painting the best. Now I'm checking the uh, the dampness of the sky, and I'm going to go ahead and paint in the uh, foliage. I'm using the hake brush again, mixed with a dark green color. I used uh, green number two, uh, maybe some hooker's green, mixed in a little bit of ultramarine blue to give me a nice dark green mix. And I use very little water in the brush because I want to have, uh, not a dry brush, but I want to have thicker paint up here because I want it to be darker. And I'm using a, a, a regular basic stroke with a hake. I'm using a flat end of the brush. And I'm looking at the uh, trees out there and trying to uh, pick out the shapes that I see, the limbs, uh, there's lots of uh, openings there for the sky peeking through, a lot of sky holes. So I'm trying to come up with uh, 
a good pattern of the branches and the sky holes here for those tree for that tree masses. So this is something that's uh, really new on this particular painting is uh, when you find an area that you're going to paint, again, you need to uh, figure out what, what kind of brush you're going to use, how big of a brush, along with the color, and then you think about what brush strokes you're going to use. Uh, use the side of the brush, the edge of the brush. Here you'll see I'm using all, all sides of the brush. I'm using the top of the brush, the side, the corners. I'm turning the brush over. Uh, I'm just trying to look at the scene and pick out the interesting shapes that would show this particular area of the painting. And I want to leave a lot of that sky popping through uh, to give me the feeling of the depth of the painting, the background sky coming through the coming through the trees. So this hake brush carries, you see it carries a lot of water, so I can do a lot, uh, do a lot of painting with that, with that brush load of paint. Uh, and it does a good job on giving me a, a nice artistic look at those trees back there. Mixing up another paint mixture on my palette. I'm going to work on that. Uh, I'm putting some darker color now. I put that first layer down with a light, light color. Now I'm going back in with a darker mixture of green. Green number two with a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue in to darken it up. So th those dark bushes there are in shadow. So they have to be dark to show that lighter background. So this is where the dark value against the light value will make that impact area, make the focal point really pop out. So this middle ground is dark. So the dark, the dark value of the paint, make it out of dark green for those low shrubberies there beneath the trees. So again, I'm following the what I see. I'm actually looking at the location. Uh, just like you, when you look at that picture there, you're looking exactly, you're seeing exactly what I see as I paint this particular part of the scene. I'm looking at that part of the scene and I'm taking that brush with the, with the paint and I'm painting in that area, that section, with the color and the value that I see. But it's darker value now really will set that background off. It'll separate the, the middle ground from the background because the background is lighter with the light sky and that light row of trees back there and the water showing, which is the focal point. So this middle ground is going to uh, help highlight the uh, impact area by having a dark value. Now I'm using a smaller brush now. I'm putting darker value over here on the left, but because it's a smaller area, I'm using that small round brush, number eight, the silver brush, uh, my plain air brush that I'm using. I use that stroke with a little side stroke loaded with the same color of dark green. It'd be hooker's green mixed in with a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'm going to try to find a way to also highlight my palette, but I, had, I need a second camera to get the, the show to show my palette mixtures. So I'm doing a, <clears throat> what I can to describe the mixtures as we go along. But I really haven't changed that much colors. Here's I'm putting in the fence post now on the other side of the road there, using a round brush with uh, 
burnt sienna mixed in with ultramarine blue. Same same dark brown. So really, if you look at the number of color mixtures, uh, I really haven't changed that many colors. Uh, I'm using the colors around the whole painting. Basically the same. They might be darker. It might be a different mixture of brown with the with the blue or the green with the blue, but uh, it's the same color mixture. I think that's one of the uh, things about painting is to try to minimize uh, the num amount of colors that you need to do a scene, but just you just uh, modify or alter the mixture a little bit to give it a different value. Now working on the, those fence posts some more. They're, they're, they're square, square edges, so now I'm doing the front edge of that particular post with a lighter color. Here I'm using uh, burnt sienna because it's lighter than the, the other mixture with the ultramarine blue. So the lighter side of that post will just be uh, burnt sienna. So I can differentiate between the front, front side or the sunny side in the darker side, which is in shadow. Not much of a difference there, but there is, there is a difference. And that's not really the most important part of the scene, so, but it is a little bit of information about what, what, what the value of paint would be used in that particular part of the painting. Now I'm adding, uh, using the hake brush with a mixture of green and blue on it, and uh, I'm putting a little more texture here in the foreground because it's rough grass. Uh, there's not much dimension there, but I'm going to put a little texture here to show a little rough, little rough terrain here, a little bit of grass growing, a little bit of roughness. So I'm using the hake here, and you can see I'm using all parts of the brush. I'm using the corner, I'm using the edge, I'm using the side. Uh, I can use this brush many, many ways. Uh, mainly, the big advantage is it, it carries a lot of paint, a, bit, a nice paint load. Uh, and the, the brush stroke itself can be done very easily with uh, just tapping the paper with a loaded brush. And uh, I can do a side stroke, an end stroke, a corner stroke of the edge. Here I'm filling a little bit of the background, a little bit of the behind that fence there, and even further back along the edge of the fence. And I'll continue on uh, adding some more texture here in the foreground. Uh, using different kind of strokes, uh, different, uh, picking up more paint off the palette, and then changing the brush stroke from the side to the edge, to the corner, vertical strokes, horizontal strokes. So it's just a variety of uh, brush strokes to give a little bit of interest here in the foreground. This also darkens up that light color of green. Remember, I put down that light green uh, just to block out the, the color and to block out the area. But then I go back in with a darker mix to uh, add in texture, add in a little darker value to create a more interesting, a more interesting area to look at. Not the most important part of the painting, but it is important to have a, uh, an interesting foreground to lead into the painting. Now I'm putting a little bit of, uh, with the three quarter inch brush, again, just going in making a few more strokes, especially next, next to different, like that, like next to the fence post, uh, adding a little more, a little more texture on top of what I did already. Just adding a little more brush, different kind of brush stroke, different size brush. Just having fun with a brush. Almost a dry brush here, I just load it. Now I'm using my dot spray bottle. This is my uh, palette in a bottle, Dallas uh, dot, dot sprayer with just water in it. And I'm spraying dots now on that, on that paper I just put paint on. And uh, that will give me texture. Palette in a bottle, 
Dot Spray. It's available on my website, everswatercolors.com. The Pound the Bottle Dot Sprayer is only available on Everest Watercolors. Now I'm adding a little bit of burnt sand in there to give a little bit of brown mixture in with that, in with that uh, green grass. Again, give me some more texture. I'm, I'm mixing in with that, the dots of water that I put in with a spray bottle to give me more texture here in the foreground. I use that spray bottle also to uh, wet my paints uh, before I start. So it has a lot of utility besides just giving texture. I, I use that to wet my paints in the palette before I start. Now I'm using that the flat brush now, the, uh, the half inch flat brush from Silver Brush. Uh, with that same green mixture going across the road and putting in a little darker mixture of green underneath that fence line. And with the round brush, uh, again, a little detail next to the posts and so forth, just to uh, clean up a little bit of the edges, just a little refinement. A little refining around the uh, the subject area with a smaller brush. Sometimes that's necessary. Now I'm adding a little bit of again a little texture here on this on this tree. I'm using that uh, three quarter inch flat brush, and I'm picking up a little bit of dark color. It's really that green mixture with a little bit of blue, more blue mixed in it, and uh, with very little water. It's almost a dry brush technique here and I'm just putting a little bit of texture on that tree. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing a dry brush stroke and I'm adding a little bit of uh, color with the dry brush stroke and it'll give me a little texture on that on that uh, big old tree sitting there on the left. Mixed up a little more a little more paint. Come back in and that way that'll give that Show a little more texture on that tree there on the left with a little dry brush stroke. Make it look like rough bark. Now I'm going back into the trees with a darker mixture of green. Uh, again, this, this is my second uh, visit to the trees again, uh, the the uh, evergreen part, or not evergreens, but the, uh, yeah, they are evergreens, but to put in a darker mixture of green on top of what was there. So I mixed up uh, a darker green, that's that green mixture I used on the front grass there, but I added a little more blue to it to darken it up. Now I'm using a hake brush to go back in and add a little more values, adding a little darker value in it to those trees. And I'm using the side of the brush. I want to keep those open areas, but I want to add a little more darkness because that's in shadow back there. So I want to simulate the fact that it's a shadow area, not much sunlight going in there. It's a dark area, shadow from the sun because of all those dark trees, all that foliage. And I'm using a corner of the brush and I'm, I'm also working around that uh, focal point area to make it more interesting now to give a little more a little more definition the edges are a little more sharper a little more edges down there near the, the focal point smaller marks uh, a little more color so that defines the uh, focal point so adding a little more a little darker color will make that impact area uh, pop out even more This hake brush does a great job on uh, putting in nice big areas with texture. Uh, when the edge of the brush, I can get a nice little rough brush stroke there with the uh, dry brush stroke with the edge of the brush. So it's it's a very very useful brush to have in your repertoire, and that's available on my website everswatercolors.com.
Now, the background, the last thing I want to be adding to the background, I'm putting a little more definition on that background trees. So I'm putting a little, little extra darker bushes there along the edge of that trees, way off in the background, just in front of the little water. It's a small, it's a small waterway back there. That's where the boat ramp is located. Now I'm going to my sketch now. I just transferred to my sketch and I'm putting in the shadow pattern. And uh, there wasn't a lot of sunlight today, but I know there's sunlight out here. So I, in my sketch, I used the photograph that I'd taken before on another day with the sun out brighter. And I was able to sketch in the shadow pattern. So that, that sketch, I'm showing the sketch here on the left corner uh, of what I'm using as my design for the shadow. So I'm going to put in that shadow pattern back there also adds a dark area in front of that uh, focal point. So again, again, emphasizing the focal point back there with darker colors. Then coming forward, a little more shadow again from those trees in the middle ground. Moving across the ground, using a uh, three-quarter inch brush. Here I'm painting with a corner of the brush. And the mixture is a, a gray mixture, ultramarine and burnt sienna. Uh, give me a gray mixture across that gray road. It's a gray road, so I'm using a gray mixture for the, for the shadow. And I put a little bit of uh, quinacridone violet in there, a little bit of purple in there also, just to get a little cool, a little warm feeling. Now bring that shadow pattern down a little bit further along the road. That breaks up the road shape. Also gives me a little dimension of the road, shows the shadows going back. So that helps. Now this wasn't in my drawing, but I went, I'm going ahead as on location. I've made a decision to go ahead and add the shadows for those fence posts, which seems realistic because of shadows everywhere else at this point. So I added shadows here from the fence post coming across the road. This gives me another little uh, added feature for the painting. So I came up with this as I was looking at the scene to go ahead and add in the shadow pattern from the fence. Also the fence over here, uh, the same sunlight is hitting both sides of the road. So there'll be a little shadow coming off these fence posts here on the left side. Again, to make the scene a little more believable with the light, the shadow, showing the, the direction of light and the direction of shadow. And that will, that pretty well completes what I show. That's, that again is a picture of the scene that I was painting from. And I'm going to bring you down slowly to the final, the final painting, which is where I finished up the final painting that I did on plain air. You've seen everything from beginning to end. And there it is, my plain air painting. Well, there we go. Uh, that was the plain air that I showed you. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. It was uh, something uh, I did on site. And uh, I'd like to get some comments from you. Uh, I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up. Uh, also, uh, give me some comments on uh, Facebook and uh, give me give me a like. I'd like to see that. Uh, the plain air painting is, uh, I would recommend, the tip for today would be uh, start out small. Now, that was a, that was a quarter sheet, uh, which would be 11 by 15. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good size painting for a plain air. Uh, if you have the time and you want to uh, take the uh, effort to do that, that's that's a good place to do. But I would recommend starting out, uh, start with a smaller 9 by 12 or even 8 by 10. Uh, th that would get you started uh, just, just for practicing and to going out and capturing uh, a basic subject that you're interested in. So that's my tip for today. Uh, so I'll be back next week on Thursday at uh, 2 o'clock. And uh, I've got another another painting I've been working on, so it'll be some washes and stuff like that. But uh, you'll you'll see my announcement uh, 
on the uh, uh, on the social media for next week. So I'll see you next week at uh, at uh, two o'clock. <laughs>